Hi, my name is Nacho. Welcome back to the channel. And what if I tell you that we've all been tricked? If you clicked on this video, I'm willing to assume that you've watched Dune Part 1 and 2 and have some favorable or not so favorable opinions about it, especially if you read the novels, something I definitely have to do. But regardless, what if I tell you that within those movies, we've been cheering for the bad guys the whole time? And I know what you're gonna say, I am talking out of my sand hold, but stay with me on this one. And of course, spoilers. Let's start with a super quick recap. Dune Part 2 follows up the events of Dune Part 1. But you knew that already. Where by order of the Emperor, Arrakis is taken from the Harkonnens and given to the Atreides who are put in charge of farming Spice. This is seen as a great honor since Spice is literally the most precious resource in the galaxy and being in charge of its production is a direct source of wealth and power. Now, Leto Atreides being increasingly liked by the people of said galaxy was starting to be seen as a threat by the Emperor so he kinda loans the Harkonnen a couple hundred thousand of his Sardaukar, which are the guys we see getting branded while a dude is throat singing and are believed to be the deadliest warriors in existence due to the harshness of their training. Second two are very close to the fighters in House Atreides. So after a surprise attack by the Harkonnens, House Atreides is defeated in the dark and with no witnesses. Leto is killed, presumably Paul and Lady Jessica alongside with him, the involvement of the Emperor is kept a secret and the Baron takes Arrakis one more time. So the Harkonnens and the Emperor are bad. Pretty easy ones to tell. However, Paul and Jessica survive and meet up with the Fremen, which is where part 1 ends and part 2 picks up and we begin seeing the influence that the Spice Melange has on Paul and how it slowly increases the intensity of his visions. Lady Jessica is also taken in and she's forced to become the new Reverend Mother of the Fremen by consuming Worm's blood that also increases her abilities, allowing her to see. Now, way before any of this happens, and I'm talking thousands of years prior, there was a lot of back work carried out by the missionary protectiva branch of the Bene Gesserit, spreading religious propaganda within the Fremen oh of a my. messiah, a voice from the outer world that will bring water and green paradise to the sandy dunes of Arrakis, the arrival of Lisan al Ghaib or Mahdi, with all that was written predicting things Paul would do. Remember, the Bene Gesserits have precognition, and the Reverend Mother says that this plan has been in the works for centuries, as she tells the Emperor's daughter that they also been prepping her for a long time. And because we know that they play a big role in the fall of House Atreides, it's easy to say that they are also pretty bad. Up until that point, Lady Jessica's only goal was to keep Paul safe, but after the attacks happens and she's giving the worms poison, the change is very evident on how she goes from the loyal mom Jessica in part 1 to the mighty religious figure spreading the word of the Mahdi in part 2. The poison also causes her unborn daughter to receive some of it, allowing her to also start communicating with her. She begins leaning heavily into the prophecies, banking in the borderline blind beliefs of the Fremen to elevate Paul into power, because they are fanatics. There's divisions between their levels of belief, but it's safe to say that despite them being very tough folk, they are very fixated on tradition and religion. This is all part of the plan. And it creates some very funny moments because even though Paul says that he's not the Messiah, Stilgar goes to the Fremen and says that the Messiah is too humble to admit that he's the Messiah. Boy, are they hooked. But Paul truly doesn't want this at the start. He wants peace for the Fremen, honoring Leto's wishes. He wants to be with Shani and learn from them. He even takes his family ring off after saying that he found his place among them. But possessing the abilities of the Bene Gesserit, he starts seeing glimpses of the future and learns that if he leans into playing the prophecies, he'll be responsible for lots of death because he will gain control, which makes it not wanted even more. So these are all indications that Paul is actually a good guy, right? He's the hero of the story. Well, not quite. The second half of the film begins and we are introduced to Faye Rautha Harkonnen, who no matter how sexy he's being portrayed by Austin Butler, he's super fucking evil and takes the place of Raban in the war against the Fremen and hits them so hard in the north that they are forced to travel south to meet with the war council. This of course upsets Paul cause he knows what waits for him there, but he travels regardless and goes to the Worm's Poison Ceremony after having a vision and finally unlocks the powers of the Bene Gesserit, fully completing the prophecy and gaining the ability to see clearly into the past and the future. From then on, Paul fully puts on the mantle of Lisan al Ghaib and convinces the Fremen to follow him in a war against the Emperor, telling them that this will bring about green paradise for their people. Exactly what they want to hear. As he can now see what's going to happen, he takes on the Sardaukar and the Harkonnens rather easily, heals the Baron, 
kills Rotha and takes the hand of Florence Pugh to solidify his claim to the throne. Johnny doesn't take this so well. And here's where my favorite Dune meme comes in. Paul, whatever you do, don't go start a holy war. Okay, no holy war. Paul went on and started a holy war. I haven't gotten that far into the books yet, but this so-called jihad will lead to the death of billions. So in the end, Paul wins. He takes revenge against his father's killers and launches a war against the great houses who turn a blind eye to the murdering of his. But why is there such a bitter feeling about this? He's sending his beloved Fremen on a holy war that's gonna kill entire planets. He said it himself, he lost Shani. Can he really be called a hero? The answer is no. Paul Atreides is far from a villain, but he's certainly not a hero in this story. That is because there are no heroes in this story. This is one of the biggest critiques that Tolkien had towards Frank Herbert, and it was the moral ambiguity that the lead characters of Dune have. In Lord of the Rings, the players are very well defined and their actions reflect their leniencies. You have the good guys aligning together to defeat the literal personification of evil in Melkor and Sauron and bring peace back to the world. In Dune, you got rich people and aristocrats fighting other rich people and aristocrats. They manipulate, they plot, they kill, all in search of power, wealth and status. They probably don't even pay their taxes. Paul's actions, however justified, depending on how you look at it, were motivated by feelings of revenge. He took advantage of the religious propaganda set by the Bene Gesserit thousands of years prior to manipulate the Fremen into doing his bidding. And Shani even says that to him. If you want to control people, tell them that the Messiah is coming. If you go deeper into it, Herbert's intentions were to present the risk that comes with having a charismatic leader win over the will of a large number of people. As he fought in World War II, this could easily be connected on how the Germans were influenced by Hitler's words into starting the Holocaust. The Fremen are not exactly what I'd call innocent, but are rather caught in the middle of an intergalactic chess match being played by the Great Houses over the control of the Spice, which so unfortunately happens to only exist in the planet they inhabit. They are incredibly attached to their traditions and belief, which is understandable considering where they live, but that also allows them to be very easily controlled by the fake prophecies. So, despite how tough they are, they are very, very naive. Even though some of the characters involved in this story can be very easily defined as evil, no one will look at the Harkonnens and their barbaric practices and say that they are misunderstood. Although in this day and age, I don't doubt that someone will take a look at Austin Butler's Faith Rotha and say, People are gonna fall in love with him and be like, I can change him. <laughs> <laughs> Wankers! Fucking embarrassing. I would very much pay to see you try. But much like them, the Bene Gesserit and the Emperor, as well as the other houses, the Atreides are carried by their own motivations. They want power. The methods on how they obtain them may vary, and you can only really look at their principles to cast a judgment on whether or not you can call them good. Although in Dune, good very much becomes a matter of perspective. So despite the Atreides professing loyalty and honor for the good of the people and Timothy's great portrayal of his rightful intentions, Paul sets forward a plan and uses his newfound powers as well as the Fremen to punish those who betrayed him and his family at the expense of billions of lives. Evil people, sure, we want him to win and avenge his father, and in his visions this is the path that will eventually lead to peace. But at what cost? This is where this story creates, in my opinion, a brilliant argument and forces everyone to choose where their morals stand. Would you do great evil to bring about justice? Would you punish the bad men if you knew that would require you to become one? Would you be willing to sacrifice your very soul to save the ones you love? These are some of the questions that this movie presents and it's why I think that Paul Atreides, despite not being evil in nature and having every right to do what he did, he's not exactly what you would call a good guy. But if you watched this far into the video, leave us a like. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about some of the choices made by the characters of Dune. Check out this video next if you want to know how some companies literally won by giving the fans what they wanted. Thank you to my supporters over at Coffee who allowed yeah, me to keep baby. this channel going. And as always, I've been Nacho. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.